lot of people are still working from home. And that means that sometimes we can get easily distracted. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards. Today, the subject is working from home. Now, more than one in 10 millennials admitted in a recent survey that they can easily get distracted by playing video games during the workday. And one in five boomers said, yeah, they do laundry during the weekday. Other distractions include watching TV, cooking, running errands, doing laundry, childcare, watching movies, and cleaning. Get this, the video game industry in 2020 increased by 9% over 2019. How can you deal with distractions and still be productive while working from home? That's what I asked David Allen, the author of Getting Things Done. Ever since uh, COVID, there's been a debate in many workplaces about whether it's effective to continue to work from home or whether or not everybody should come back to the office. And some people who work from home like that flexibility, but they readily admit they have so many distractions working from home. Um, they don't want to tell their boss that. I mean, they're, they, they like that environment, but they are concerned about you know, their own productivity. Uh, what advice do you have for being productive at home when there are these distractions? Well, <clears throat> you need to do your best to minimize those distractions. Uh, you know, number one is make sure you have your own workspace that's very discreet from anybody else's that you live with or around. So that when you sit there, like I am sitting here in my workspace, I'm in work mode or I'm in the mode that this goes on, you know, I, I'll feel very different or do very different kinds of activities or work if I'm in my living room in my easy chair. And it's very different. So when I sit here, I've created a context where this is kind of my work context. And so I think people need to make sure they have that. And um, <laughs> frankly, a, a, a lot of people decided to renovate their home because they realized, wow, I like working from home and I need a better home office. And so they look around and they go, you know, this doesn't quite work right. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me do that. So, you know, that's one way to do it. Another way is to renegotiate with family or people that you live with. Hey, guys, when I'm sitting here, uh, I'm in work mode. When I leave here, we can play with the dog. I can, I can play with the kids or whatever. But when I'm here, can I have that? Obviously, if you have a door, you can close. That helps. Uh, but that's, you know, I just say, make sure you have a good work environment that at home. Now, come on, you know, I've, I've worked from, I've, I've had my, I've not made any distinction between personal and professional, and I've worked, you know, essentially uh, out of my own personal office space for 40 years. And any digital nomad is doing the same thing, you know, wherever they are, they just sit down. And so, even building your own personal systems so that they work even when you're mobile. You know, if you're moving around, you're on a train, you're on a plane, whatever, you need to have your own workspace that you can create, that you can sort of portableize, if you will, and, and to do that. I think once you have that done, then that's not so much an issue. I think a lot of the stress comes with that people aren't used to the freedom of not having a structure, like being in an office from nine to five or nine to six or whatever, or eight to whatever they are that then you can trust that's going to keep you focused. Uh, and without that, then a lot of people kind of freak out, like, oh, my God, what do I do? So I don't have a really good answer to that other than you need to figure that out. But I think that, that is... you, raise, you raise a really valid point there, that some people uh, can work in a noisy coffee shop and be just as productive, whereas other people need more structure. What we're seeing, however, are employers now trying to impose a corporate standard uh, whereas employees are saying no I can work just as just as well as home and so maybe the real answer is how we measure the success of employees yeah well you know it puts a lot of managers at, at task of saying are you hiring people to, to sit there and look like they're busy or are you hiring people for what they're producing mm -hmm. so you know as you know, that's a <laughs> those are not the same thing right. you know and so you know so what it's probably done is 
increase the necessity for people to clarify roles and accountabilities. What kind of role? Why, why am I why am I being invited to this Zoom meeting? Because of what role I have, or because I'm supposed to be going every Monday to this meeting, but I don't know why. You know, so I think it's making people a lot more conscious about the nature of their work on a day-to-day -day basis. And why am I doing this? And is this on purpose for me and or the company or the group of people I'm engaged with? One of my clients just said recently that he's being invited to far more Zoom meetings than he was ever invited to meetings in the office. And he's having a he's really having to get tough about that and saying, I'm not needed here. I, I'm not going to join. Yeah. Well, you know, some of the organizations we've worked with inside and, you know, that, that sort of gotten this, you know, have started to create some standards called you do not. There's no expectation you go to a meeting unless the purpose is clear. You know, about what the purpose of the meeting is, and some of them then still need to add to and that the role, you know, that that in that meeting, you're there because of this role you have. Mm -hmm. So those are, you know, again, getting involved with holacracy, you know, a few years ago, sort of made that a lot more explicit. So what's the role I have? What are the accountabilities for that role? And therefore, I need to go to this meeting, or I don't need to go to this meeting. You know, so I think it's just making people more conscious about it, which is a good thing. Yeah. David Allen is the author of Getting Things Done. I discuss productivity with David on a regular basis. If you don't want to miss any of our segments, please subscribe below. And if you have any questions for David, post them below or email them to me at daveedwards at outlook.com.